My new base model M4 Mac Mini will now become my home server. There is no reason for this to be on fire for this. I'm doing this because I'm a little piggy and I bought an M4 Max MacBook Pro for editing. Even though I just insisted to the internet that for videos like mine, no one needs one of these. This will do just fine for editing. There are only a few things that I want out of a home server. I want a huge redundant file storage set because I'm a greedy photographer and hoarder and have amassed over a terabyte of raw photos that I never intend to throw away. Also, the project files from these YouTube videos are sometimes like 100 gigabytes each because I shoot with two 4K cameras and I need to get them off my laptop after editing and put them into cold storage. But I always want that to be accessible in case I want to steal three seconds of B-roll from an older video. Second, I want a really good jute box for my garage studio that I can control from my watch, because this place is also my home gym. Third, I want a computer that is always on, lying in wait, that I can call into from any TV in the house and actually any laptop or TV in the world, and stream television series from Plex that I have either ripped from Blu-rays that I own or definitely legally attained in some other way. I travel a ton for work, and I like to be able to continue where I left off watching Mad Men without having to fumble through a hotel TV that inevitably won't sign in to something for who knows what number of reasons. Netflix always tells me I have too many users connected. I'm just one user with a bunch of screens. Oh, and a time machine backup. Something living on my network that I can always connect to over Wi-Fi anytime I'm at home and from anywhere in my house, so that as long as my laptop is awake, it'll just automatically back itself up anytime I'm home without having to physically connect it to a drive. Because one day, whether out of a rental car or out of a remote work site, this computer will be stolen from me. And I wanna be able to just clone a new one without any hassle. So this little guy and a handful of peripherals does all of these things super well. And the vast majority of the time when it's just sitting on my desk back there doing nothing, it pulls very little power and produces almost no heat. A lot less power than most other solutions for these very first world problems I'm solving with it. I have a Windows computer back there that never moves, but it's got a 3080 graphics card, and even at idle, it pulls more power out of the wall in a day than this thing does in a week. My Synology NOS does most of this, and some of it better, but it can't be a jukebox. My Raspberry Pi can do all of these things, but I can't get it to listen to my watch. So, it's the Mac Mini, a home server that can do a bunch more things than this, but these are the things that I ask mine to do. Starting with redundant storage. Hard drives are kind of big and pretty slow, which is why we don't really use them in computers anymore. But for long-term storage, they're perfect because they're also pretty cheap. You can get a four terabyte hard drive off of Amazon for like 75 bucks. I happen to have two of these right here because I was messing with this Synology NOS last week and upgrading its internal storage from hard drives to SSDs. Whether you like it or not, at my name here on YouTube. So I'll need some way to plug these into my Mac Mini. And I happened to make a video a few months ago about ripping apart these external Seagate enclosures to get at their hard drives. Printer's going crazy over there. While I was doing that, I ripped out the interfaces from those external drives, and that's what I'll be using for this project. These actually just plug right in. For hard drives, unlike with SSDs, you need an externally powered SATA interface. So these need 12 volts. So these drives will get their 12 volts. And then I got the USB connectors with USB-C on the other end. So those will just plug right in. SSDs can use the power straight off the USB port. So you can use a much cleaner little interface like this, because then it's just one cord, one thing. With a hard drive, you need a cord and power and the thing. So with an SSD, you can get one of these tidy little single cord adapter things. But for hard drives, Amazon sells little SATA docks with power pretty cheap. I'll link them below. With these two four terabyte drives, both plugged into the Mac mini, open disk utility. I'm formatting these drives to APFS, and then under file, you can go to RAID Assistant to turn these two drives into one drive that just automatically mirrors itself to the other one. That way, whatever data you keep in here is on both. So if and when one of these drives fails in the future, I can just swap it out with a fresh one and not lose any data. Running through that process, bim bam boom, these two drives are now a RAID 1 mirrored redundant backup drive. Then, as long as you go into system settings, search for sharing and turn on file sharing, when these are mounted on the Mac mini, I can get to them from any computer that's on the same network in the house and use them as a time machine backup or use them as a cold storage dump for all my raw photos. I'll also use this to store old YouTube video project files onto. Next, the jukebox. Jukebox. That's a term you don't use anymore. I got rid of my gym membership last year after doing the math on how much time it took to drive there and back four or five days a week. Only a 15 minute drive works out to like 
10 hours lost in a month. Can you believe that? And I used that to justify buying this power rack and functional training thing and a bunch of weights to work out at home. Naturally, I wanna jam out while doing this thing. So I've repurposed this giant PA system I used to use for live events in another life. When Sarah and I used to own a company that put on marathons of all things. We're talking a, an 18 inch subwoofer back there and a couple of PA speakers that sit on the shelf. Those all run through the Mac mini with Apple Music. And one of the benefits of keeping everything on my home server within the Apple ecosystem, I can pick audio on my phone and then just hit a button on the bottom of Apple Music and have it play through this computer. So I don't have to walk those additional five steps to the other side of the room to change a song. I can even control it through my watch. What a world we're living in. Mac mini as a media server. I recently discovered the joys of Plex. I'm a little late. I know it's been around forever, but I've just had a streaming subscription to basically all the services, and I kind of ignored Plex. All it took though was one TV that refused to let me download the Paramount Plus app when I wanted to watch Yellowstone when I was down in Miami for a job. Or was that Paramount? You know, Paramount and Paramount Plus are two different apps and you have to pay for both of them. But anyway, I realized that with Plex, as long as I own a show, if I rip something off a of Blu-ray or download the show so I own the file, I can access those files from any TV, even a dumb TV, as long as I have a a Roku, what is this thing called? Roku Express 4K Plus things. And since I live in a big house with three other people, the M4 Mac Mini has enough CPU and GPU and media engine power to transcode files to everyone's TV all at once. Even if Plex has to transcode a 4K.mkv file to 1080p so that it'll play on the TV in Bill's room, something my Synology NAS struggles with because I bought the cheap one and its processor can't quite keep up with several streams of transcoding with certain types of files. So the last bit to my kit is this Oracle USB-C hub. This thing has a terabyte of super fast NVMe storage with all my TV shows and all my movies and a bunch of ports. And this thing just stays hooked up to the Mac mini all the time. And it works surprisingly well. These guys just actually started making their own brand of SSDs and they're super fast. So this guy just lives on my desk back there now, always on, next to a huge mess of cords that make all these peripherals work, causing my already relatively easy life to be a few less clicks easier still. And I keep it set up as a computer terminal too. Part of why this little hub is great because I can plug in a keyboard and a mouse. Because sometimes I just like a change of scene. Sometimes I don't want to sit at this desk. Sometimes I'll write or answer emails from that desk back here. Life is full of little mysteries like this, Andy. How's that new studio? Goodbye. My new base model M- Ow. Ow. My new base model M4 Mac Mini will-